On the breakfast, Donyo Kupo submits his withdrawal letter for the position of vice presidential candidate of the Labour Party to INEC as Dr. Yusuf Danti Ahmed, a speaker's vice presidential candidate for the party. Also on the breakfast, Super Falcons lost to the South African side in their opening game of the African Women Cup of Nations 2022. We talk with a sports journalist. Don't forget, we'll also be looking through today's newspapers and analyzing the biggest stories of the day. Welcome to The Breakfast and Plus TV Africa. It's a beautiful Friday morning right here in the city of Lagos. And the queues have actually returned. And you know what that means. Traffic is very traumatic, very saddening. I'm hoping that relevant authorities will swing into action and will do the needful and ensure that Lagosians have a better life and a better time really stressful uh, to go about your businesses. But we start the conversation with a top trending. As always, we tell you what's happening in different spaces and all of the thoughts, what's getting people talking in different parts of the world and also in different spaces. Now, uh, top on the list is the Odumeji's church demolition in Anambra State. Now, the very popular pastor is known for uh, Indaboski. <laughs> the Indaboski pastor. Why? Uh, as much as it's very comical, but we can also take out the fact that, you know, what happened is very saddening. So two sides of all of this. The governor of, uh, Governor Charles Saludo of Anambra State has come out to explain the reason uh, the state government demolished the church building of a popular prophet, Chukwe Mecca, uh, as is also known, Odomeji. Uh, but we quickly just, uh, you know, as you can see that, uh, he's explained the church is the mountain of Holy Ghost Intervention and Deliverance Ministry, and it was demolished by members of the state tax force. But as much as that's the case, we'll, we'll definitely get to it. So we'll just uh, let you look at, you know, all this going on with that. Now, the Anambra state government has been very big on Anambra urban renewal, and government has actually mapped out structures for demolition. I mean, we've had several structures that's been demolished by the government. Uh, some churches have also been victim of this particular move. And so the, the issue of... Uh, the issue of demolition is, you can see what's actually going on there. Uh, we're hoping to, you know, have a perfect audio to that, but unfortunately that's not happening. I think we do have an audio now. We'll just let you listen to that. Well, you can see, uh, you know, from the video, the entire process of demolition that took place right there in Anambra State. You have the state tax force. Like I rightly mentioned, the government has embarked on demolition. And this is actually a national issue because if you move across different parts of the nation, you have uh, government, you know, embarking on the project of crushing buildings that are encroaching on the waterways mostly. But one thing that stands out from that particular action is the fact that uh, the pastor has been assaulted, not necessarily because he's a pastor. I mean, the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, it states that uh, we all have a right 
to life and dignity. And so it is very um, dehumanizing. It is, it, it is actually very uncivil in the course of carrying out uh, duty as a people. And that has constantly been uh, the major, major concern for the Nigerian police force and every other relevant authority that has been saddled with the responsibility of enforcing uh, obedience or ensuring that policies are implemented. We talk about the mode of operation, modus operandi. It is very, very condemnable. Uh, I mean, how do you treat a fellow human like that? Uh, no one is actually guilty until they have been proven, I mean, innocent. Whatever the case is, be it uh, a criminal, be it the suspect, whatever it is. But in this case, uh, what a lot of Nigerians have reacted to, not that, you know, the issue of demolition is a major issue, but how uh, Odomeji has been handled. You could see the assault on him, and that actually contravenes the constitution where there's no respect you know for his life as a person because he has a life uh, a right to life and also you know dignity and to be treated as a person as a human and it's 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 a major uh, concern we're hoping that uh, the security agencies that are security agencies and the security personnel would understand that the constitution is what it is, that we will be humanistic in our endeavors as we go about our businesses every day trying to implement and do our jobs. It's okay, you want to demolish, but do you have to treat him that way? It's very condemnable, it's wrong, and we are hoping that the law would take its course and those responsible will be punished. Except we're going to talk about the fact that, you know, uh, in the code of conduct or in the mode of operation, then it involves harassment and assaulting uh, civilians. When you constantly, we say that the slogan for the Nigerian police is that police is your friend. So when you look at that video uh, of the tax force, it's a combination of different forces. You ask yourself, does that look like a friendly gesture and act? Very saddening. But still on the issue of the church demolition, like I mentioned earlier on, if you move across the entire uh, states of the Federation, you find out that they're illegal structures. The question here is, how did we even get to a point where you have, before you have a structure being erected, you have to acquire the land? So who gives approval you know, to acquiring that property? That's on the one hand. And now, let's even say we lost it in the first instance of buying you know, the land. A property. So you get to a point where you have to have a, a structure being erected. Now, how do you explain the fact that you have an urban planning, you have a department that's saddled with all of the responsibility to ensuring that, uh, you know, owners of properties do the right thing. So uh, how do we even get to the part where uh, this structure is erected on water channels and, you know, very, very sensitive areas? Uh, who gave the approval for this structure to be erected? Now, some people have said that the corruption that actually manifests itself in these agencies and, and government powers that tells us responsible, the level of awareness, how many property owners are aware of the National Code of Building. We need a lot of awareness and uh, sensitization as regards owning of property. But that's it on that, Odomeji. Oh, uh, it's really sad, and no one deserves that kind of treatment, no matter the circumstance. This morning, we're saying to the relevant security agencies, in the course of discharging your duty, you, we need to be very civil about it. We need to act like we're in the 21st century and in 2022, and not act animalistic towards our fellow human. Another concern right here is uh, top trending and generating different reactions and getting Nigerians talking as organ harvesting. The United Kingdom uh, court has actually, uh, you know, given its ruling saying that the victim is not a minor. So uh, July 7th was actually slated as a date for first hearing after the former Senate president and his wife, Ike Kuro Madu and Beatrice, uh, were remanded in the prison. Now, and according to, uh, you know, the conversation that's been put out, two things actually stood out yesterday, that an evidence was accepted, and evidence was put out, and it was accepted that, uh, you know, the party involved is not a minor. So, yes, the Oxbridge Magistrate Court in the United Kingdom had ruled that the kidney donor in a Kuramadu's case is not a minor, 
and both had appeared before the court and pleaded not guilty to the charges. I mean, this uh, evidence that were been put out and uh, it, it was accepted. But aside that, uh, there's something that was also very, very interesting and that stood out. It's something you want to see uh, some sort of protest. And in that kind of protest, because it's a public issue, uh, a lot of persons are very interested in this particular case. But really, really outstanding is you could see um, some boards that were being put out just at the entrance of the court. The UK is not Nigeria. Take it back. I mean, the UK is not Nigeria. Organ harvesters must be prosecuted. And on, on top of it, you find take it back. Another part talks about, you also find another board, they were just uh, different. After destroying our healthcare system, Nigerian leaders regularly travel abroad for medical help. Buhari, stop wasting Nigeria's money on medical tourism. You are a failure. I mean, so uh, uh, this case is very serious, and it was the first hearing for the former Senate president and his wife, Ike Kuru Madu, but it took a different dimension when you also have some Nigerians who are in the United Kingdom expressing dissatisfaction with all that's going on in the Nigerian polity, and you can see uh, that in, in a way of protest. Now, there also will be uh, an adjoinment of that particular issue, uh, the hearing, uh, they were remanded. That's also another outcome in prison. And August the 4th would be another time uh, where you have another opportunity. So it, it's a good thing because uh, the argument was back and forth the first time this case was on, uh, whether he was a 15-year-old, and constantly the United Kingdom had claimed and constantly reported that he was 15, even when we had different reports coming from Nigeria that he was 21. Well, however, it's good to see the progress that's been made in this case and would definitely just allow the media to do their job. Now, moving away from that, something very, very uh, shocking and very, very scary happened in Lagos yesterday where we saw a video that went viral of a naked woman uh, who hijacked the fuel nozzle and she sprayed uh, petrol as a PMS on customers and those around. It was really, really worrisome. Uh, let's quickly see if we can take that video right now and when we come back, we continue with the conversation. I've been prompted that we do not have a video but we continue with the conversation. Now, if you haven't seen the video, I'm sure that at some point, before the day runs out, you stumble on it and you see that video. Now, an incident happened, like I mentioned, a woman who was stacked naked uh, was seen using the uh, uh, fill nozzle at uh, the, the petrol station. This happened somewhere around Ikoyi in Falomo, a very popular uh, fueling station right there. And one thing that stands out is that uh, is the bravery of the people that were around. It, it's a disaster that was averted yesterday. And kudos to everyone who was around who helped stop all of that incident. The story quite not very detailed because, I mean, how do you explain? Where did she come from? You see a video, but not very sure whether she came from a car, if she was strolling, or, you know, someone dropped her. Where did she surface from is one question. But, like I mentioned, most importantly is the fact that an ad... Uh, unfortunate incident was averted yesterday and we say uh, thank you to everyone who was around and helped stop that particular situation but what cannot also ignore and turn back from the fact that i mean it's just very very eminent that what happened was a case of uh someone who is not mentally stable it's 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 it can't just be uh, a case of mental illness or frustration whatever the case may be but I'm saying that for everyone that was around yesterday, you did very great, and we say thank you for your efforts. That's so much we can take this morning on our top trending. We'll take a break when we return. We'll be looking at our pages this morning, front pages of our national dailies. Please stay with us.